Beer. Delicious, delectable, a beverage that has stood the test of time. But how is it made? I'm Sudsy Sam, a brewer with five years of experience under my belt, and today I'm going to be showing you the process of making beer. <sighs> the beginning of making beer almost always starts off the same, choosing the appropriate grains. Beer primarily uses malted barley as the majority grain, but other grains such as wheat, rye, and rice may also be included. Once a grain has been selected, they need to be broken down from whole grains and crushed into what's called a grist. The main way to process these grains is through a mill. Grains go into the top, fall through a set of rollers, and are then crushed, turning into a mix of flour and husks that make up the grist. Once all the grains have been crushed, it's time to actually start making the beer. The next step in the beer making process is called the mash. Now, this requires a piece of equipment called the mash tun, big surprise there, which is just a vessel meant to store liquid and has a false bottom which essentially acts like a giant sieve or strainer. Mashing begins by adding in hot water and mixing it in the freshly milled grains. The goal of mashing in is to properly hydrate and heat the grain to anywhere between 147 degrees Fahrenheit and 156 degrees Fahrenheit. This allows for a process called sacrification to occur. The enzymes in the malted barley break down the starches from the grain and turn them into fermentable sugars. The lower the mash temp, the more fermentable sugars. The higher the mash temp, the less fermentable sugars. After allowing a proper amount of rest time for sacrification to occur, you now have a sugar water called wort. This next step is called a Vorloff and it's technically optional, but highly encouraged. Vorloffing is a short step of transferring the hazy wort filled with grain and particles back to the top of the mash. This occurs until the desired level of clarity is achieved. At this point, the mash is finished and it's time to transfer the new wort over to the kettle to be boiled. This process is called laudering and allows the liquid to be separated from the grain via the false bottom in the mash tun. Now, there's an optional step during this process called sparging. Sparging achieves two goals, rinsing the grains of any remaining sugar and adding any needed water to the mash to get to the desired final volume for the beer. Once the kettle is full, it's time to boil the wort. During this time, ingredients such as sugar and hops can be added. There are many reasons to boil the wort. It sterilizes it to prevent any potential beer spoiling bacteria, it isomerizes hop acids, which add bitterness, flavor, and aroma. It dissolves any added sugars into the wort, which adds sweetness and alcohol via fermentation. It separates proteins from the wort, and it removes sulfurs from the beer as well. Now that the wort has been properly boiled, it is almost ready for fermentation. The next step is to separate any solid matter like hops and proteins, which is done via a whirlpool. Whirlpool spins the beer around, causing any solid matter to gravitate towards the middle of the kettle. The whirlpool is stopped and the wort is pulled from the side of the kettle, leaving any solid matter behind. So now the wort is ready for fermentation. It just needs to be cooled down to the proper temperature and transferred to the fermenter. This step is called the knockout. The wort is sent through a piece of equipment called heat exchange, commonly referred to as a chiller. Cold water is run adjacent to the hot wort, bringing it down to fermentation temperature. This can be anywhere from 60 degrees Fahrenheit to 74 degrees Fahrenheit for ales and 48 degrees Fahrenheit to 58 degrees Fahrenheit for lagers. Once fermentation vessel is full, yeast can finally be added. The yeast will slowly eat the sugar from the wort and convert it into alcohol, producing CO2 in the process. Beers can take anywhere from one week to up to eight weeks, depending on the style. After fermentation is finished and yeast has had the proper amount of time to condition out any weird flavors, the beer is crashed down to serving temperature, carbonated, clarified, and ready to drink. Yum. So just to recap, first you mill your grains, then you mash in with those grains in hot water. Afterwards, you vorl off to clarity, you take the beer and lauder it over to the kettle, sparging during that time. You then bring the beer to a boil, adding in ingredients like sugar and hops. Afterwards, you whirlpool. Then you knock out, cooling down the beer into the fermentation vessel where you pitch your yeast and let it ferment until it's ready to go. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're curious about what beer is being brewed in the background, it's this one right here. It's our red IPA and it's damn delicious. I really hope you enjoyed learning how beer is made. And if you did, please hit like and subscribe. It really supports the channel. I'm Sudsy Sam. Once again, don't forget to keep it Sudsy. See you next time.